does it feel to listen back to songs that, that, that you've written so young? That's fine, really. You know, we can still do them, and, and, and they're not... Uh, some of them are bad, you know, some lyrics are bad, you know, but we don't do them. But we only do the ones, the best ones. Yeah. And you had um, uh, Norman Blake from Teenage Mouth Club, who's a, a uh -huh. band play, play on, uh, on one of the songs. Honeymoon, Honeymoon? Yeah, Honeymoon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, is that just a relationship that built up through playing gigs together? Or more? Yeah, I think so, yeah. We played, we did a tour, short tour with them back in oh, about four or five years ago now. And um, we met maybe in festivals, I think, maybe on and off. And then uh, we did a tour two years ago now. And our, uh, we had two guitarists, or another guitarist, and he couldn't make it. So we thought, we were all sitting around, oh, who can we, as a kind of half joke kind of thing, because we didn't think he'd do it. And could we get Norman, Norman Blake in from the Team to play guitar and sing? And he phoned up and did it. Yeah. So that's great, yeah. He, did about three or, five, three or four or five gigs then. Would you say there was some parallels maybe between Gorky's and Teenage Fan Club in terms of Teenage Fan Club are a band who have been around for a good while and they've got like a really healthy back catalogue of records, yet they've never really kind of been that bothered with kind of breaking into the mainstream or reaching sort of certain sales points or whatever, they've just got about making their music steadily and they have this sort of longevity to their career. Is that something that you maybe would aspire to with Gorky's? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, we haven't ever... Like Teenage Fan Club, really. I'm, um, we haven't really tried to. I don't. We haven't made records to kind of just purely to sell, really. You know, and there's nothing wrong with doing that, maybe. But we've always kind of put uh, uh, the the fact that we want to make music, we want to listen to ourselves before money, really. Yeah. It's quite simple. I mean, um, some a lot of bands don't do that, you know. But there's nothing special about what we do, and we're not being righteous about it. But mm. that's. To, be, to make ourselves happy and to, to, for us to carry on so long, I don't think you could be able to go into the studio and record it. rubbish just for money. Like. So I think music in Wales in general has benefited from the fact that media gave attention to it at all. I think by now it's pretty normal to be a Welsh band. But it's hard to think back to about, about even just six, seven years ago when being a, what you'd keep it quiet if you were a Welsh band because it just wasn't good cop. It wasn't you just keep it quiet because it wasn't it was a bit of a stigma, like you know. Yeah. So through all the crap we've had to put with you know being compared to bands that we obviously don't sound like, and through all the tiresome kind of scenes the press has created or did create, uh, what what's come of it is uh, uh, you can be a Welsh band and not laughed at. Is, is there a healthy kind of uh, Welsh language music scene? Um, well, some people argue that bands, I guess, have been the detrimental to it, really. You know, so I don't think we probably helped it, you know, because maybe we did, to be honest, we probably did. We, well, we started off in Welsh and we yeah. did go bilingual, but then again, you can't... We always were bilingual, but we were bilingual at home, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we were secretly bilingual, but then we went public. It's like coming out, it came out. So it's all in a sense now. But we, nah, we, 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 we gotta, you've got to put you know, the music first and the, the fact that you see these are right in English and the lyrics. We still write occasionally in Welsh, you know, but yeah. it's, it's fair. You can't think of other bands and how you, how you, sure. you know, it's silly. Hopefully, so I had to. I think we're going to try and tour as much as possible. Really. We've got a tour in America coming up, and then hopefully in Spain, and um, really probably start recording an album at the end of the year and bring it up. <laughs> Business as usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't seem like a big, big touring band. I mean, you, you tour quite regularly, but you don't seem to go on those big, lengthy kind of year long kind of. No, it's it's, 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 it's it's very hard to get the money to do that, you know. Yeah. I mean, if we had a bit more money and if we had better resources, we probably would tour longer. If the truth be known, it's not out of our, it's not us going like, we are, to, you know, we are uh, fragile um, artists and we need to ask, it's not that at all. It is a case of, there's only so much you can do. I mean, 
the, the, the um, yeah, um, stereotype is of bands turning down tours, we know, yeah. you know, but it's not the tr tr it's not it's not uh, that's not the case at all with us. It is actually costs a lot of money to tour because we're not a massive band. So if we went, say, for example, if we went on six month tour of America, we'd probably be bankrupt by then, yeah. and you know we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, not be able, we wouldn't be able to afford that. Right? Yeah, that was great though, because you know, we we're only doing a short tour now. But it's yesterday we're all after about two months of doing nothing. You know, it was really exciting. You know, get on the bus again. And, yeah, it's, it's every time it's really exciting for us. Yeah. How I long to feel that summer in my heart by Gorky Psychotic Monkey. 